This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. If you missed the previous episode of Starship Sabres and Scoundrels, then you cut me to the quick. On episode 73, we began our bracket to determine the best lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars. We completed round one, and this week we are going to determine our winner. Um, shoot. Emotionally speaking, you know, it's hard because, oh. Okay, game time decision once again. Well, don't labor over it. Mm. <laughs> Obi Wan versus Anakin. Oh, there push. it is. Okay. Ah, transition. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Okay. <laughs> Taxes. Dear Clone Wars, hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. I haven't seen you in years, but wow. When I saw you a little while back on social media, I got really excited. Now I can't stop thinking about you and hope we can get together soon, even if it is just to recapture those stolen moments. So maybe we can meet up, see where it leads, and, I don't know, Disney Plus and chill? Like you, I could go either way, but I'm, I'm going to go Braxton Hicks contraction. Well, I will remind everybody I'm a lover, not a fighter. Huh. Who would have guessed? You're that much of a romantic. Uh, my mom did. She told me that all the time when I was growing up. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome back, Scandals. Here's what is in store on this week's episode. The Star Wars news business is booming with announcements about Celebration. A wrap on filming two major projects and so much more. We'll get to all of it in this week's news. In our hypothetical, we talk to the man of a thousand and Obi-Wan voices. Pardon bad pun. We welcome James Arnold Taylor to the show to talk The Phantom Menace, voice acting, and a whole lot of other stuff. Finally, we'll conclude the show with another edition of Silence Fools. We've got a good feeling about this episode. Someone asked it. Thanks for joining us for episode 75 of Starships, Sabres, and Scoundrels. It's not a long time ago. It's not in the galaxy far, far away. It's right here, right now. Starships, Sabres, and Scoundrels. Scoundrel. The source for Star Wars news and discussions with your hosts, Dennis Keefley. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Jay Krebs. Yeah, but it's custom. It's custom fame. And Darth Taxis. Why is it so big? Why is it so big? Get ready for fast-flying, saber-swinging, hot space opinions from your hosts, analysis, and other, other stuff, other stuff, fun stuff. Battle positions. I'm not your host. I'm just a generic, unpaid announcer. Thanks, Mario. Hey there, good bad scoundrels. You've returned to the podcast that is not often imitated, but sometimes duplicated. I'm your co-host who enjoys a good vocal cord stretch. Dark Texas! Coming to you from the autograph staging room of my flagship, the Assessor Collector. And with me are my co-hosts, who are often phlegmatic until they choke on their emotions, Dennis the Phantom Menace Keithley and Jay the Hut Chair Krebs. Dennis and Jay. <coughs> Choke? Who's choking? No one's choking here. Hey, it's Jay here. How's everybody doing, scoundrels out there? How are you doing, Dennis? They can't answer you. They're, they're listening right now. I know. Now. There's no two-way microphones. They're... Yeah, they're they're answering in their heart. Just wasn't sure if you knew. We're not on mm-hmm. Alexa or something, you know. But, yeah. yeah, they're nodding and waving as they mm-hmm. there you go. listen to this in their cars or on Hi. their walks where Hi they back. happen to be. But uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Starship Sabers and Scoundrels. Um, so glad you could join us. I hope that you are a returning listener, and if not, and this is your first visit, well, you came for a good one. We got a great uh, interview mm. coming with James Arnold Taylor that we had a lot of fun recording, um, but. Um, Hey, so what do you guys got going on Star Wars uh, related lately? I got a lot of stuff actually happening here lately. It's just, it's sort of been um, kind of snowballing, it seems like a lot. But I have to say, I am drinking hot cocoa out of my Retro's Out staff mug right now. Mm, So cheers, cheers to everyone out there. Um, but, oh, and there goes my puppy. He thinks that I'm <laughs> knocking on the door. <laughs> no, honey, it's okay. So, but hold on. He thinks I'm knocking. 
And of course, no one else is home to to like shut him up. So don't you have a muzzle on my own here? No, just kidding. You don't have a muzzle. So yeah, I actually have quite a bit going on right now too with all of this uh, happenings. And I had some of my students at high school that I'm super excited to share some information. One just today said to me in Foods Lab, I was listening to a podcast last night, a Star Wars podcast, and one of the people on it sound a lot like you. <laughs> and were, I were said, Were they talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, What was the name of the podcast? And he goes, It was like Sabres and I don't know. And I go, Is it Starship Sabres and Scoundrels? He goes, Yeah, that was it. I go, I'm Sorry, Jay. Get it right, you little punk. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I thought that sounded like you. I didn't know you had a podcast. And then, of course, like three other kids in the class were, were like, you have a podcast, Mrs. Krebs? And I said, yes, I do. I said, Cam, how did you find us? And he said, I was on a Star Wars website and it was a recommended podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So I don't know, but thank you, Powers That Be, for yeah. recommending us because that's amazing. That's weird. I know, right? And so, you know, I've I've been writing down the name of our podcast. So, hello there yeah, to all yeah. of my students who yeah. who might be listening. Yeah. and welcome. And and I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll kids, don't go now. back and listen to the previous episodes. Okay. Just uh, <laughs> and the uh, and, and by get it right, little punk. I mean, hey, welcome to the listener audience. Uh, we're glad to have you. <laughs> so. Well, and it was so funny because I said, "Well, which one did you listen to?" And he goes. I think it was like called wizard something or other. I go, oh, you heard the latest. That's a wizard. So, so I wizard. said, you got to go back and listen to the lightsaber bracket. And I was like recommending some things. So anyways, and then I told you guys that I had um, brought a couple of books to school for one of my students to read. I should hope. And I gave her, I gave her a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her a choice between um, Lost Stars, um, Bloodline, I think it was, and the Ahsoka book. Come on, and Lost she Stars. chose Come she on, chose Lost Stars. Lost Stars. Yes. Oh, and and um, Dark Disciple was Ooh, another one. Yeah. But I told her, I said, you pick one, you're gonna read it, and I said, and then you can pick a different one. So she came to school today, and this was about a week and a half ago. I gave her the book. She came to school today, and she and was tears. so bubbly and excited. Oh. And she, no, she was, she was like, oh my gosh, I love this book so much. And I said, how far are you? And she told me where she was. She's like almost to the end of the book. Oh well. She's like, oh my gosh, I love Sienna, and and I just yeah. love, this and I love that. And she's going on and on. So Kirsten, you know, thumbs up to you, girl. Um, That's kind and- of a thick book. I mean. I know, I know. So I was really impressed. And um, like update the on the uh, Wars, right uh, update on the the girlfriend uh, saga presentation. So we're through the prequels now. So all we have to do is watch Solo and the two sequel movies. So and then Colby's girlfriend is all caught up. So that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it should be acceptable. In your well, eyes, I know, right? right, right, and she's loving every minute of it. Right. And then when are you uh, gonna give her the ritualistic tattooing? Um, we don't do that at my house. Oh. But you know, we do temporary tattoos. Uh-huh. That's about it. Uh-huh. But there's some other stuff going on too. But I'm so excited for Queen Shadow. I can't even tell you. So I have it on pre order. So by the time this airs, I should have that book in my hands. Wait a so, minute. Is that out? It's coming out this weekend. So that will be by the time this airs, it will have released. I believe March third is uh-huh. when it comes out. Um, I think it ships. I think it ships that time. I don't know. I, I did it on Amazon, so it'll be here when it gets here, I suppose. I'm reading A Dog's Way Home, so I need to finish that first. Nice. It keeps making nice. me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. Queen's, Queen Shadow comes out on March 5th. March so, 5th. So it's yeah. t- Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday. So you'll have it. Uh, so it comes out the day that this is getting released. Yes. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh. Yes. So scoundrels, it'll be a happy mail day in my house. Yeah, and, and I'm sure we'll be coming uh, covering this on an upcoming episode mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. We we tend to hit most of the major book releases. It'll also so. be a happy female day, day Jay. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Gotta spread the uh-huh. love. I see what you did there. I don't see the gender of male. So taxes, do you have anything going on Star Wars wise? Um uh, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> so. I, well, I shaved my beard. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, shaved. So it, shaved you my went. Beard. You went from 
like Jedi Master to Jedi Padawan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I woke so you up, went backwards. Well, I kind of woke up the other day and I had a beard. I don't remember what happened, but I went ahead and shaved it. Have you been sleeping for a week? No, no, just, uh, just kind of there. All right. Okay. Well, okay. Um, interesting. <laughs> but um, <laughs> over here, I uh, finished. Uh, it's it's not a new book, but I picked up a um, a, a Legends book, uh, one of the last ones, as a matter of fact, uh, Honor Among Thieves, which was a oh, uh, yeah. on solo centric book and i got turned on to this uh when i was last on coffee with kenobi and Whoa. we were giving our top five uh legends books and this was on dan zare's list and so i picked it up and read it it was a fun read um not not in my personal top five probably maybe not in my top 10 but um it kind of reminded me of the uh with the tone of uh han Solo at star's end a bit except for hmm. being instead of being a prequel to a new hope it was set in between A New Hope and uh, The Empire Strikes Back, and um, Han ends up trying to get a um, rebel spy out of Imperial space, and then that leads to a variety of other adventures, and just kind of the way the whole thing unfolded. It had the same atmosphere, so to speak, uh, as some of those, uh, as that trilogy of books that we covered uh, last year did. So if you're looking awesome. for a fun Star Wars book and you're not particularly concerned about whether it counts as canon or or not, uh, pick that one up and give it a try. Um, I'm going to try and uh, read uh, Razor's Edge, which was the Leia book that was supposed to be in that kind of a faux trilogy um, sometime soon after uh, Queen's Shadow, probably. But mm, Cool. So there's that. And then we have a, a couple of uh, show announcements. First... Uh, we are going to, of course, be at Star Wars Celebration in uh, a couple weeks. And uh, while we are there, we are going to be distributing show buttons. Uh, we just settled on two designs. Uh, we've picked our classic uh, Empire Strikes Back themed um, show name. And then we have the uh, S3 logo with the name of the podcast underneath. So mm -hmm. if you see one of us at uh, Celebration, you know, come get a button. Yeah, uh, only nine ninety nine. Get yours today. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're free, actually. Oh, we're we're yes. handing these out to listeners, so that it's our Definitely. it's our gift to you. So, um, come find us, and uh, we'll we'll all gonna have some. So, uh, well worth the price. They'll make you instantly popular with everybody. All right. Or it'll get you a whole lot of alone time. Um, we'll <laughs> yeah, see. we're not sure yet. So, right. this is a new that. new thing no, for us. So we'll see. So all right, and then the other celebration related announcement for starship savers and scoundrels is that we are having a Car really watch. laid back meetup oh. on the saturday of celebration at the arc by at arc bar at the hyatt uh which is near the mccormick center and that'll be at 7 30 uh saturday evening um it's just real casual the the bar is a my understanding is a walk in walk out type of experience. Uh, they have out indoor and outdoor seating. Apparently, dogs are welcome in the on the outdoor patio. <laughs> uh, all ages are welcome, um, unless the hotel changes their policy with regards to that. Yeah. Uh, but I plan on bringing my wife and kids. I think Jay, you were talking about bringing your son. And uh, in addition to us, the other members of the Retro Sta Zap staff that are going to be at celebration will be there as well. Um, so. Yeah, come by and uh, if you didn't see us on the convention floor, you know you can find us there on Saturday evening. Come see out yeah, of I think town Texas. Out of out of town Texas. <laughs> there not, you not go. Not too much. I don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, it might be a walk in throw out bar. Just ah, the <laughs> I'm super excited. I think you know, if, especially just just drop by, say hi. You know, give you a button. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. we're Fair. not as scary as in person as you might think. But uh, no. you know, you know, the drunker we get people, the more easier it's going to be for me to sell them for nine ninety five, nine ninety. Oh, now come on! Sorry. There will be kids there, so you have to you oh, have to have definitely to be on your best behavior. You have to go home and rethink your life. Yeah, I've done that before. It always sounds <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> Well, we've got a lot of news to get to, so why don't we put into this segment and head on over that way? All right. There is a lot of Star Wars news to cover, so let's get to it. Uh, Jay, what do we got going on with Star Wars Celebration? Oh my 
goodness, so much going on with celebrations. So brace yourselves, Effie, because here we go. So <laughs> the pre-order for Prince for a Celebration Artist Prince is now live. And if you are interested in picking up one of these celebration exclusive prints from the Lucasfilm selected artists, head over to darkink.com. Not all of the artists are currently available, um, but there's at least 10 at the moment. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want something, don't wait because mm -hmm. they were already selling out on the first day. Dang. So, yeah, there was one in particular that, that I was really, really wanting. And as of this recording, they had just gone on sale this morning. So, of course, by the time this airs on the 5th, when y'all are hearing this, it's almost a full week later. And mm -hmm. day one, sold out. But um, there was a nice little thing on there that said that there would be additional prints available on site. So at least <sighs> I was breathing a little easier on that one. And the one that I was wanting was the one by Karen Hallian um, titled No One Is Really Gone. And it was the one with oh, Luke and yeah. Leia. Yeah, the one with Luke and Leia where he's uh, kissing her forehead and she's holding Sabak dice. And oh, my goodness, I went online for that and sold out. So, yeah, that's the one I've seen a lot of people uh, kind of going uh, gaga over. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the, as you, as you said, it's Luke and Leia from The Last Jedi, and he's kissing her on the forehead uh, goodbye. And um, that one has proved very popular. Some of the, um, some of the prints that I noticed, uh, I remember last time in Orlando, the Ahsoka prints were extremely popular. And oh, they yeah. there was one, it was kind of a... Uh, I hate to to label it with a country because as soon as I do, I'm going to get wrong. But I think it was kind of like a Japanese looking print and it had Ahsoka with her two blades and maybe some Japanese writing on it. That one I know went out. But um, there's, mm. a, what, three Ahsoka themed prints this time around? Yeah. Uh, two of them mm -hmm. are with her and the staff, which, you know, that uh, she had at the end of the uh, series finale for Rebels. Right. And one's with uh, called Gu Guidance from Wolves. And she's posing with the Wolves, the Loth Wolves. And then there's another one Again, her uh, this one's the returned, um, and that is uh, by Diane Vaznelis, and good. it's it's her with a carnivore, uh, carnivore, carnivore. Thank you. And um, so I, I, I see those they were vegetarians. Two yeah, but see, there's 250 prints available on uh, for pre-order, and then I think they allow them to bring another 50 to the floor. So mm -hmm. you are, you know, th it is a very limited edition. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, you know, taxes have uh, any of these caught your eye? Yeah, I think uh, I kind of like Jedi's with wolves. I think that's kind of nice, you know, the one with Tano and the wolf. Uh, and then, I don't know, the mall one, uh, In Umbris Potestus Est by Chrissy mm -hmm. Chung, which uh, I think that's a, a potato dish. Is that what that translates to? Uh, what is uh, what? Potato dish? Shame! Isn't that Latin for potato Shame. potestus? Shame. An umbris potestus est? Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> it translates to the power is in the I, shade. I was, oh. was going to say, I don't think that yeah, potato has anything uh, so, to do with potatoes. So, I, I'm loving that one, though, too. Somebody's the dark small some print. shade on it, but yeah. That's interesting. Because it almost looks like he's got the Sith holocron sort of behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah that does. That's a really good one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I like that too. Yeah, I, I like, like um, Michael Pascal's print, uh, the tribute oh, yeah. uh, Stardust a Rogue One yes. tribute. That looks that looks really good. Um, just a couple of pointers, real quick, and then we'll move on to our next item in the news. But again, there's 250 prints available online. There, most these artists, most of them are going to be set up in Artist Alley. There's a few of them that decided they wanted more space, so they have exhibitors booth outside of Artist Alley. Wow! Uh, and that would um, that includes Brian Miller, uh, Matt Bush, Brian Rude has a really great print of uh, Vader with the uh, Death Star AT-ATs and some uh, Tie Fighters and ATSTs and Stormtroopers behind them. Uh, that one's called Tyranny of the Empire, which I'm really fond of at the moment. Uh, Adriana Vanderstelt. Uh, Chris Travess, uh, uh, Kayla Woodside. She's got a print that I know a lot of people are fond of. It, it kind of looks like a playing card. It's got uh, Han and Leia embracing, and then it's the um, the the version of them from The Empire Strikes Back on top, and the bottom, it's their The Force Awakens. Beautiful. Uh, I love uh, that one. Yeah. And then uh, Jerry Vanderstelt, 
uh, has got a great print of Luke with his lightsaber ignited. It's at nighttime. He's kind of hiding behind a tree after he's taken down a speeder bike. And there was a uh, nat at some stormtroopers out looking for him. I bought his print at Orlando of uh, Darth Vader arriving at Cloud City. It's just called Rival and absolutely mm-hmm. love it. It's, it's the centerpiece of my uh, art collection here at the house. But uh, nice. so, you know, so, uh, you know if, if you want them, get them now while you can, because by the time this goes live, some of these may be gone. <laughs> they may not be yeah. available right. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So the other on. one, too, was the um, the Ray with the faith. That one I love too, but I was looking at the size of it and it's almost three feet long. Whoa. So, yeah. I mean, you really, it's, I think it's 18 by, by 34, something like that. I want to say, hmm. so you really have to have some wall space. What else is going on? in Well, the news? as we predicted, the Star Wars Celebration Chicago is celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Phantom Menace. The first film of the prequel trilogy will be featured on the final day of the convention. And yes, of course, we predicted it here on this show. This is the show of prognostication and seeing things in the future and guessing. So, uh, hey, well, it's, yeah. yeah, it was a natural. I mean, because it is the 20th anniversary. And uh, so it's not really a surprise. I'm a little surprised it's on the last day Scandal of the uh, Yeah, I am too. Convention. But, you know, I, Ian McDermott is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So I'm wondering if uh, Owen McGregor will show up and you know, Liam Neeson or, you know, Natalie Portman. I doubt it. Mm-hmm. All of them. But, you know, I expect at least some of them. I would be surprised if Ahmed Best was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, cool. the, the announcements of the biggest name actors are still yet to come. Uh, right. but, uh, and uh, we do know that Ray Park's going to be there now. So That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just another one. Yeah. Right. All right. You know. Well, I might end up, unfortunately, not being able to see this because I might have to head out before then but well, yeah i'm gonna dude. i'm gonna plan on making this one that's uh you know tentatively right now without knowing what the rest of the schedule is for that monday uh yeah, but yeah you should it's fun to go be in a group like that you know with the room we talked yeah. about that before with the uh revenge of the sith you know thing mm-hmm. right so, yeah. i will definitely be there because since we're driving um we're not on any set schedule so as soon as we check out of the hotel monday morning i mean we've basically got the rest of the day and we're on spring break that week so Man, we can we just road trip it Oh yeah. man, I'm looks. I'm so looking forward to that. It was funny because my son said, "Mom, are you going to be able to stand me for that long?" And I said, "Honey, I don't know if you're going to be able to stand me for that long." That's right. <laughs> so I mean, we're we're both just geeking out over everything. So it's time to put the B.J. Thomas uh, greatest hits album on and hit the road. Um, no. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Well, the next two rounds of celebrity guest announcements announcements for Star Wars Celebration in Chicago have been released. The first list included Lando Calrissian, Billy D. Williams. Whoa! Whoa. 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 Yeah. Then there's uh, Plano Zone, Alan Tudyk, which is mm-hmm. K2SO from Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Freddie Prinze Jr., Kanan from Rebels, will be there. Mm-hmm. Taylor Gray, Ezra from Rebels. Mm-hmm. Anthony Forrest. And if that name doesn't sound familiar, well, he was the mind trick stormtrooper on Tatooine. Wow. We have uh, also John Morton, who is going to take on the Empire all by himself. So, of course, he's Dak from Empire Strikes Back. Julian Glover, uh, General Veers, uh, and Michael Culver, Captain Nita, will also be there. That's a cool one. Uh, Then today, we got the second round of announcements, which include, as Jay was just alluding to, Ray Park. So, Darth Maul from um, The Phantom Menace and Solo. Uh, Tia Sakar, uh, Sabine from Rebels, that's and cool. Mant Lantern, Anakin from the Clone Wars. So we have at least one Anakin that's going to be at uh, Celebration. But, um, <laughs> you know, looking at this group, um, the only people that I have met, I know, Texas, you've met several of them, um, are Freddie Prince Jr. and Taylor, Taylor Gray and Tia Sakar. I met them in, at, in Orlando for Celebration. Uh, uh, Taylor and Tia were just awesome. Uh, to me, they were, you know, they made everyone who came up to the uh, table to get an autograph just feel important. They gave you their full attention. Uh, you know, Taylor shook my hand, asked me my name. Uh, you know, we chatted just a bit about Rebels, and I, you know, they just made the announcement that we were heading into the final season. Um, and so, you know, it was, uh, you know, so we chatted about that. Second, it's like, yeah, it's all good. We've had a great time, and but you know, all things have to come to an end. And then with Tia Sakar, I get talked to her about the um, Dark Saber episode when she was uh, dueling with Kanan, and how much I enjoyed nice. that. And she did. She took a couple minutes and talked to me about it, and how you know how much of it was. Uh, I won't say it was a challenge, but how much they really got to give it their all on that episode. So um, I can at least vouch for those two if you want to uh, meet them. And I can definitely vouch for Ray Park. 
He is awesome. He is a fans fan. So, yeah, I definitely go for that. Yeah. Um, I, don't know, I kind of feel like uh, I would focus on, but you know what? They're all good. Depends on what your tastes are. But, you know, if you haven't uh, gotten the opportunity to be in the presence of Billy D or, uh, you know, I just feel like, uh, you know, it's kind of rare to come across him as of late, you know? Um, as a with uh, Julian Glover, well, Julian Glover still kind of makes the circuit pretty regularly, but Michael Culver, you know, I mean, that's a, I don't know, I mean, that's one of my favorite lines, you know, the whole apology accepted thing, and uh, plus, uh, <laughs> I always swore like his uh, his uh, first in command was um, Steve Martin in a cameo, but um, I could never prove that. <laughs> you know? Interesting. Yeah, go back okay, and look. So- You'll see what I mean. You can see his image in the reflection in the mirror, in the window. I think it's Steve. I'll have Martin. to do that. Yeah. I'll have to do that. Well, okay. So I have a really serious question. Now, one of the things that they're talking about with Celebration is that, of course, you have to have a ticket to Celebration in order to be able to purchase Hold autographs on. and photo ops. Oh, I better write mm-hmm. this down. Go ahead. Okay. So when you... I haven't tried yet because I'm uh-huh. still kind of debating who I want to sign up for and mm-hmm. that type of thing. But mm-hmm. what's the process? Dennis, you've, you've been through this. So how do, do, how do they know that you have a pass to get into celebration? Do you, Is it something that you have to prove when you well, no, pre-order? It, or no, no, is no. it just kind of like, warning, 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 you must have a pass or you will not be able to get on premises? So if you buy it without... Yeah. yeah, well, it says... It's um, implied. If you go to the site to buy your um, autograph ticket or your photo ticket, you know, as you read through the directions at the top, it says, in addition, admission to the show is requested to purchasing photo ops or autographs. You must have a valid ticket to Star Celebration for the day of your autograph or photo ops. If you haven't done so, you can get your tickets to Star Celebration here. Of course, every day but Monday is sold out. And as of the day we're recording this, this is the last day to order tickets for that Monday and have them mailed to you. Um, But you can... You are not required to show any proof in order to buy a, an autograph okay. ticket, but you're just not going to be able to get in and get it done if you don't have a ticket for that day. Um, you know, just um, you know, keep in mind, not everybody is going to be there every day of celebration. Uh, right. At this group that I'm looking at right now, Alan Tudyk is there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Anthony Forrest is available to do mind trick on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Billy D. Williams, uh, you know, you can only scream "whoa" at him on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So. You know, you definitely look at it, you know, look at that and, you know, make your decision accordingly. Uh, you know, Billy D. Williams is one of the is um, behind Ian McDermott, only behind Ian McDermott right now for the price of a photo op. Uh, he's one hundred dollars. Ian McDermott is one hundred and ten. Hmm. So, you know, these, these they aren't they aren't cheap, but, yeah. you know, it's fun if you get the if you have the money to do it. Um, so. You know, it's the uh, I'm you know right now I'm talking to my kids about who they might want to meet while they're there, and so we're starting to make those plans right. as well. And right. you know, it is a it is an opportunity for you know they're interested in some of the um, the voice actors from the animated shows because that's how they got into Star Wars, sure. and uh, so that makes uh, and you know with these new announcements, we've got some new uh, team up photo ops. You know, I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a whole bunch, but yeah. you know, Hayden and Hera. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's that th- available that Thursday and Friday, and Kanan and Ezra, uh, Kanan and Maul, Maul and, and Ezra, Nita, those wacky guys. That one I didn't see, no, but uh, it's not. but the um, but at any rate, you got you got the opportunity to get some more of these um, you know these these photo ops. You know, there's a Rebels trio mm-hmm. that's listed now there, and uh, that's cool. Considering that there's four people, okay, so that one's uh, Vanessa, Freddie Prince Jr., and Taylor Gray. Wow, but uh, uh, so they didn't invite Tia. How about that? Well, she just uh, got announced. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if maybe if they when they announce Steve Bloom because I'm assuming he's going to be there. Right. If they don't have the you know the the crew of the ghost yeah. uh, of it, uh, as a photo op yeah. with all five of them. Ah, dang but, it. Uh, yeah, that okay. Rebels trio as a photo op is 125 dollars. So a photo of three right. of them that's not too bad. So yeah, you kind of get a three for yeah. one deal on that a little bit, but okay. So Man, I just lost my place. Can you guys start all over and just tell me everything again, please? <laughs> so I don't want to turn this into, you know, like a celebration, how to get autographs, you know, session here, but, um, 
maybe for some of our listeners, since this is this is going to be airing after the last day for the tickets to be sent out in the mail. Um, so I'm assuming that if you buy pre-sale, then you'll just have to go to the will call window. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I'm assuming that the, we'll still be hearing more additions. At least I'm still I'm still holding out for Hayden. Hmm. Hashtag oh, yeah. holding for Hayden. <laughs> well, you know, it's they've released. You know, Billy D. Williams, that's a big name in Star Wars. Of course, Ian McDermott, Peter Mayhew, those are probably the three biggest name actors right now uh, that have been announced for Star Wars uh, Celebration. But, you know, we know that likely we're going to have several of the key players from Episode Nine, And I would not be surprised if we got some of the cast of The Mandalorian uh, there as well. And But they're just they're parsing them out, uh, you know, a right. little bit at a time. And, you know, probably, you know, Two weeks to four weeks from the first day of celebration, that's when we're going to get some of the biggest announcements about who's yeah. going to be there. You know, last time uh, on the Star Wars show, they uh, you know they teased it several shows in advance about that Friday. You know, it's going to set the whole tone for the for the weekend. You know, don't want to miss it. And then you know, right beforehand, it was you know, then a couple episodes later, they talked about how Kathleen Kennedy and Warwick Davis were hosting a you know, this panel, you know, celebrating 40 years of Star Wars, and they're going to have a bunch of names. Of course, they left out the fact that George Lucas and Harrison Ford were going to be there. But uh, so they, these things, we still have several announcements to go. Uh, you know, I, I kind of waited to finish the notes on the news today until as late as possible, mm-hmm. because I knew they were going to announce a few more people that were going to be there. And it just so happened to be uh, Matt Lantern, Ray Park, and uh, Tia Sakar. Mm-hmm. So we'll mm-hmm. see who's next week. Yeah. Well, one more thing, too, about Matt Lanter really quickly. Um, As of the recording of this episode, the new Anakin for Battlefront has now dropped. So you have Anakin is actually a playable character dropped onto the scene. Oh, he's, you know, dropping those. Because that could have gone a lot of other ways. I'm just making sure you clarify for people with vivid imaginations. Yo, yo, Anakin in the house. But yeah. So. (laughs) <laughs> but um so yeah but you know now that we've talked about celebration we can we can talk a little bit about um the oscar celebration that just happened so we just had another oscar ceremony that is coming on and once again star wars was shut out wah, wah, wah. Yeah. but ilm was nominated in the in the visual effects category for solo and two marvel movies but the award went to First Man, so uh, that's too bad. But yeah, yeah. also, Star Wars notable actors Adam Driver and Richard E. Grant lost the Best Supporting Actor award to Masharala Ali for Green Book. Good job. Carrie, yeah, Carrie Fisher did did get a shout-out, though, when one of the producers, Charles Wessler, for Green Book, which won the Best Picture, dedicated the movie to her. So, that's so sweet. He's known her for decades. And he was a production assistant on both Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So he did have some personal contact with Carrie. And and anyone that that met Carrie has been, you know, touched by that. And everyone has said that. So Mm -hmm. so that was nice. But, you know, too bad that we didn't walk away with anything. But you have that. And too bad I didn't watch them. Well, I don't put too much stock in the Oscars anyways, quite honestly. I mean, they're kind of fun to watch. I like the red carpet. I like, you know, watching to see, what are you wearing this evening? Oh, I'm, I'm wearing Louis Vuitton. Yeah, but right. other than that, not a whole lot. Yeah, uh, I, I had them on. Uh, I was doing other things. It's kind of what I do with the Oscars. It's um, Whoa. Uh, And the Discord server had um, had quite a good discussion going about it. So uh, if you, you know... Uh, just another reason to head over to the Retro's app Discord server. But, yeah, nobody uh, nobody told me anything the day after. I missed everything. And just asked about it, but yeah, you didn't miss too much. I guess I could have gone back and read, but I hate reading. But something I don't hate are Hasbro announcements. Yay! Hasbro has announced their Star Wars Celebration Chicago convention exclusive. I guess we're going back to Chicago news now. So everybody, uh, do a one eighty. Uh, <laughs> Considering that it's the 20th anniversary of the Phantom Menace, it is only fitting that they are creating a Black Series 6-inch Darth Maul and Obi-Wan on a The Phantom Menace card back. And, okay, wow, yeah, these look really good. It's kind of reminiscent when they were doing the uh, a new, you know, the old you know Kenner card backs, Brilliant. you know, yeah. from those things. But, man, I'd be hard-pressed. Have we had young Obi-Wan in 6-inch uh, uh, playable form yet? 
No idea. Um, I, I don't really collect don't that many so. of the Black Series six inch, but this is the card back that they used when the Phantom Menace was released. Yes, yeah. yes, and, yes. Because I have a bazillion of these yeah, things. I have a few. Yeah, <laughs> and so this is what they did uh, in Orlando. They had um, it, it was at that time they released the they had the the vintage uh, the Black Series uh, collection for the original um, A New Hope characters, and then the convention exclusive was the Luke Skywalker and his X-Wing, uh, X-Wing uh, Blackier. Um, so, I, as with any convention exclusive, you probably want to try and get there on the first day and pick yours up. That being said, the Luke was available for a few days. Um, they were initially parceling them out through a lottery system each day that... Uh, you had to get a, you know, you you entered your name in the lottery, and if you were selected, you had a ticket, and you could take and get a line, but they had more than enough. I was in line, and you could get two of these, and I was in line to get them for my kids, and they literally sold out eight people in front of me. <laughs> so, oh, it hurts to, uh, miss, so I, to miss that one. Yeah, yeah, I missed it. Mm, uh, yeah. I found other fun things to bring home for them. I mean, it is a Star Wars convention, so it's not like there was yeah. a short of stuff. But, um, but at that point, you know, at that late in the convention, I, I didn't want to stay in the line in the early days for for these type of things for the exclusives. I'm just that's just not my thing. I'm not that big of an action figure collector. But on yeah, I think it was Sunday or Saturday afternoon. But I think Sunday. It was just kind of like starting to run out of things. I, you know, I've been around the floor so many times over the previous three days that mm-hmm. you know I was willing to stay in line for a while. Yeah. and wait. And uh, they just but they they just happened to run out at that point. That's so, when you, you know, start a conversation with the gentle giant people, and it's like so. Really big figures, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know Funko, the Funko exclusives that year went out pretty quickly. They put so. the code. In oh, I'm sure they Funko. will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. These remind me, I mean, they look exactly like the three and three quarter inch versions, um, but mm. obviously for the fi- the six inch size. But obviously. it would have been really cool if they would have reintroduced. Do you remember the, um, what was it called? The Comtech? That went with them. Oh, where they yeah, were, yeah, that, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, Did got, you guys have any of the contacts? Actually, I didn't have any of the Phantom Menace figures. <laughs> oh, man. I've got tons. So I've circled back around and at uh, Half Price Books, which is the only place to get full books at half price. If you want to pay, buy them for a quarter of the price, you only get half the book. Um, so I found a bunch of these the other day, just you know, hit and miss. And I went ahead and got them because they did have the Comtech and they were unopened. And I just thought, you know... I don't know. Maybe I do need to get Ahmed Bess autograph one day on a Jar Jar original action figure. Don't Definitely. know. Just saying. It's kind of one of those things. I'm kind of a little weird like that. So stop well, judging you, me because I'm sure there's weird things you do too. Do you want some of this? Well, don't we all? But I'm telling you what, you're, I, I'm dead serious. When when you say that, I agree with you. I am hope I was hoping that they would announce Ahmed Bess because quite honestly, I would love to meet him and I would love to get his autograph. So I'm sort of kind of holding out for that yeah. one too. I mean, we didn't really talk about that, but mm-hmm. um, I, got, I, I got nothing but respect for that guy, honestly. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, in other news, episode nine has wrapped principal photography. Director, writer, and producer J.J. Abrams made the announcement on Twitter. He posted a picture of Daisy Ridley, John Boyoga, and Oscar Isaacs embracing with the caption, It feels impossible, but today wrapped photography on episode nine. There is no adequate way to thank this truly magical crew and cast. I am forever indebted to you all. So, mm. this picture has been quite popular and oh, yeah. some is controversial um but it yeah it, i don't know it's um i got mixed up feelings about this one guys uh I, one awesome we're getting that much closer to get uh seeing episode nine and uh you know if you think back to recent star wars movies and how much difficulty some of them have had in getting completed and to the theater it's kind of nice to know that uh this one is they wrapped photography well in advance um you know, of course, there'll probably be some pickup shots this summer. I can't imagine that sure. <laughs> they right. won't do that yeah. as part of the process. Um, but, you know, the Star Wars movies kind of have an uncertain future after this. Yeah, so it's weird. Yeah. part of me is just kind of like, oh, really? You're you're done shooting the last Star Wars movie that we know of. Hmm. I, you know, I know this is going to be the last one, but right. there's nothing. There's no other Star Wars movies. We we got stuff coming to Disney Plus, and we'll talk about one of those in just a minute. We have no other Star Wars movies currently announced. Um, right. And the only thought thing that we thought we were getting was affirmatively canceled. Um, so, anyway, what yeah. did you guys think? 
Mm -hmm. This this picture is so emotional. I mean, Oscar Isaacs is just, you can just see, he's about ready to burst with tears. But, you know, I was, of course, trying not to analyze this cart. too much. But <laughs> I, I don't know. Waffles. I think John Boyega is looking at the food <laughs> cart, man, the way he's looking. But, um, but you know, I was looking at this and, and thinking, okay, well, Ray's got her three buns back and she's back in her Jakku garb. Why? Hmm. And then I was actually listening to Kanata's Castle and Becca brought up a good point. And she said, well, maybe even though this was the last scene that was filmed, of course, we know from production that they never film anything in order in sequence anyway. But perhaps this was something that they, they had to shoot in order to work it in with Carrie Fisher's footage, which makes sense. Huh. So okay. I thought that was a brilliant observation. Yeah. So, um, yeah, possibly. I mean, yeah. the thing is, is that, you know, Poe's got longer sideburns and longer he hair. He does. Like right. That's Ben's the got, only thing that doesn't work with that. I can't I tell, tell if that's what it huh. is or not, but you yeah. know, Finn's got much longer hair. And the thing yeah. I'll say about um, about Daisy Ridley is that that is not the same exact same outfit she wore in Jakku. Uh, she's got the collar. Uh, she's got that band around her arm where she got the cut from the Last Jedi. Uh -huh. uh, it's similar, but there are oh, some mm -hmm. there are some differences there. And and, uh, uh, and she's also uh -huh. are we sure that's Daisy Ridley because she's looking. Away. It is. That's her hands. Oh. I, I'm uh, a hand person. Uh, uh, I know. I, I'd know her hands that's, anywhere. Uh, okay. Oh, that or she's. I know it sounds creepy. Hey, that's all right. I like creepy. Hey, what am I, guys? <laughs> Ready? What am I? What am I? Principal photography is almost done. We did a lot of work and had a lot of fun. That would be Beastie Boys. No, that'd be principal photography rap. Oh. All right. I got you. Uh -huh. I'm old and white. <laughs> So are the Beastie Boys at this point. But anyway. Well, um, actually, not all of them are with us, Jay. Um, this is true. Okay, yeah, in, so moving in on. loving memory. Yeah. Yes. Pause. The Last Jedi isn't the only production where filming is a wrap. The Mandalorian has also wrapped filming on the first season of the upcoming show for Disney+. Plus. So that's exciting news, too. So we're we're going to get a whole lot of Star Wars here very this soon. This Mando thing is all... I'm sorry. Yeah, and then we know that um, the Cassian Andor series is about to start filming, and apparently production. If you go over to Fanta Tracks, you can find a story that there is some sort of a third Star Wars television show that just started production. Uh, no one knows anything about it, but it's like uh, it's being, you know, a, a, you know, apparently some corporate filings over there revealed this to them. It's like series three is what is the uh, is the working title of it. So we may. I'm guessing we're probably going to hear about that one in celebration. Whatever the Interesting. case. Interesting. Be. Sure. I'm sure we'll get name. a lot of. Yeah, we'll Star get a lot Wars of uh, announcements. Series there. three. Yeah. See how terrible it is, everybody. It's quiet. <laughs> oh, it's because also it's my turn to talk. Force Friday is back and bigger than ever. This October 4th, Force Friday, man, it's hard to say, October 4th, 4th Friday, returns as Triple Force Friday and will feature the debut of brand new products inspired by three of the year's biggest Star Wars releases, including Episode IX, The Mandalorian, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Can I fit more colons into that title? No! <laughs> Um, you could you could do Fallen Order colon Episode One. Um, just, but uh, true, yeah, hmm. yeah. But um, yeah, cool. I'm glad to hear they're doing it. You know, there's been speculation on every year that uh, that will be the last Force Friday because you know after the Force Friday for the Force Awakens, they've not nearly been as big, impressive events and not okay. as well attended as uh, you know, as that first one was. So. Right. You know, and we don't have Toys R Us around yeah, <laughs> for yeah. Force Friday. So, you know, head over to Target and wherever your game, uh, where you like to get your video games for the Fallen Order, I suppose. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, anyway. All right. Well, that is our look at the news. So, uh, Scoundrels, there's a whole lot more going on. Uh, but if we covered it all, we would have a three hour podcast just talking about news. And we would never get to our excellent conversation with James Arnold Taylor. So, if you want to know more about these stories, head over to such websites as uh, RetroZap, uh, Coffee with Kenobi, Jedi News, Fanta Tracks, and TheForce.net. Greetings, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, also known as James Arnold Taylor. Hey, it's a little of both. And you are on Starships, Sabres, and Scoundrels. Ugh, I have a bad feeling about this.
This week, our guest is an actor well known to Star Wars fans for his portrayal as Obi Wan Kenobi on The Clone Wars, as well as his roles on countless other television shows and video games, including Plo Koon, The Flash from Young Justice, Cosmo and Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank, Johnny Test, and Spider Man, just to name a few. I'm, of course, talking about the one and only James Arnold Taylor. Welcome to Starship Savers and Scoundrels. Hello there. Wow, it's great to have you. I, I have to say that. I, I'm, I'm paid to say hello. There. No, uh, it is <laughs> wonderful to it. be here. Yes, it is great. I'll say it in my regular, hello there. Um, and uh, yeah, I am, I'm thrilled to be here. That's awesome. Thank you so much. James, before we get started, last summer we began a fundraising effort in support of NSYNC Exotics Wildlife yes. Rescue and the Education Center. And just as a reminder, our listeners, they were raising money to build a Millennium Falcon-shaped pool for a couple of their young tiger rescues named Kylo and, appropriately, Kenobi. Uh, <laughs> you generously donated some of my autographed pictures and a copy of your book as raffle items in support of the wow. fundraiser. It really helped us out. Uh, and we just wanted to take a moment and thank you for your generous help and assistance with the fundraiser last year. Oh, well, thank you so much. No, I think it's just a fantastic cause. It's, it's really cool that you're doing that. I know that uh, Padme Amidala, Catherine Tabor, would be very pleased as well because she's oh. a big supporter of anything that helps with wildlife rescue or animals in any way, too. So, oh. you know, I, I must concur with the senator and uh, <laughs> do all that is right awesome. to protect right. our wildlife. Awesome. We'll have to keep that in mind. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Well, again, uh, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, and we're starting to talk about it quite a bit now on uh, Starship Savers and Scoundrels. So we thought you'd be someone who was involved in Star Wars as much as you have been, and especially in a very important role for the past uh, dozen years. Uh, it would be fun to have on the show to kind of talk about it. So with that in mind, um, James, what you know, when did you first get to see this movie and what do you remember about that experience? <laughs> That is a great question um, in that it's really the only movie that I didn't have any involvement in uh, because I got hired after that between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith to start doubling for Ewan on things. So uh, it's the one that I saw just as a regular fan, oh. as it, like anybody else. I just went to the movies to see it because we were all excited about this new Star Wars and what's it gonna be like and what's it about. So I remember it vividly, actually watching it in the theater. And I remember especially being taken by Obi-Wan now and, and not knowing at the time that I, my life would be changed, you know, a couple years later by this fantastic character and by what Ewan McGregor did with the character. But I remember very specifically, you know, I have a bad feeling about this. You know, <laughs> his his first lines and hearing what Ewan was doing and going, man, he's he's capturing the essence of Alec Guinness. Yeah. But he's this young man and he's playing it his own way, but he's also doing, he's, oh, wow, I was so taken by that. And I also just really, my first reaction was, yes, we get to see him as a young man. Yes, we get to see who his master was. And then, you know, as the movie progresses, and I, I don't think I need to say spoiler alert, I think everybody's seen the movie. <laughs> I hope um, so. <laughs> <laughs> but to see what happened to Qui-Gon, that, that part, ah, uh, you know, so painful, but it also expressed, uh, it, it, it said so much. And it gave me so much years later for what I would draw for my portrayal of the character. So, yeah. You know, at the time, I, I just had no idea. I just thought, wow, we're just seeing this new part of Star Wars unfold. You know, I, I also, I really loved the character of Padme. I think that, that that's a really important character, a character that maybe doesn't get enough love or attention um, or hadn't maybe. I think people are really starting to really see that now. But it just struck me. I thought, oh, this is really neat to see these behind the scenes of these characters that you know we kind of wondered about all the time so that those were my first impressions of watching it you know i think everybody kind of has their own things uh, you know different opinions and there's people that are prequel lovers and people that don't like the prequels uh <laughs> and that movie is the one that they pick apart the most but i mean the other thing is is i absolutely 100 percent and still don't have i had no problem with jar jar binks i really uh, okay. i just thought okay yeah. of course <laughs> of course, it's good. and you know the funny thing is, I showed these movies to my daughter not too long ago, 
And she goes, I love Jar Jar Binks. He's just goofy and fun. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's right. When you're not looking at it through these eyes of hypercritical, this better be Star Wars from when I was seven years old. And yeah. if it isn't, I'm yeah. going to have a cow. You can just have fun with it. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and of course, you know, Ahmed Best is a friend of mine and he did a fantastic job. And the pressure of the world was on him to to take this character and turn it into something that people weren't going to pick apart. So, you know, I, I love that now, now there's so many Star Wars fans that have grown up with this movie that it doesn't matter to them. They just go, Jar Jar's a part of it and this is a part of it and Anakin, little Anakin is a part of it and it's just part of the story. And so I just, I, I look back and I look at it very fondly. Whenever I watch it now, it actually still makes me as emotional as, say, Revenge of the Sith hmm. because of what it represents. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that experience propelled you forward in the characterization of Obi-Wan Kenobi that, that you've portrayed? Yeah, I really do. Um, because again, it gave me some grounding on what he was like as a young man, even though, you know, he, he was he was an adult, but you really got the sense he, he felt like a young teenager at the beginning there, you know, and he's talking mm -hmm. to his master. And, and of course, he grows up a lot in that. He yeah, really, you know, yeah. we see, have we not seen that? Mm -hmm. um, then we, I wouldn't know as much. I wouldn't have as much depth. You know, I was very fortunate to be able to, through all the years of Clone Wars and over a hundred episodes, to take the character into places that Ewan never got to take him in three movies. But without what he had done, it wouldn't be the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you go home that night and just start practicing the voice just for fun? <laughs> just in the mirror, just walking around saying things or, uh, I didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't strike me at all as something that I would be doing. I, I, you know, farthest thing from my mind. Uh, it's so crazy. The, the one big disappointment for me, uh, from the Phantom Menace is that Darth Maul was so we thought okay. killed. Yes. Mm. Um, because I thought this is the guy that is going to be who Darth Vader's got to fight by the end of these three movies. You know, yes, I was, I was yes. looking ahead and going, okay, this is the bad guy. But then they, you know, kill him off. So we think, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> and and it made sense that Obi Wan would be the one that has that revenge. But I was I was bummed about that part. So something that you said there, I was I was not aware of. Um, so you began doing work um kind of in support of Ewan McGregor for Attack of the Clones or Revenge of Sith did I understand that correctly yeah yeah so it was uh 2001 is when I started doing things so Attack of the Clones was was done by then I guess but uh there were toys and things that were based within that world oh. and then with Revenge of the Sith coming up but it was also the micro series of the Clone Wars is really what started it for oh me. yeah so I was brought in to double him, and uh, they played me a bunch of lines. I didn't know what it was for. I didn't know it was for a, an animated series. Oh. I thought it was just going to be like to put a voice in on a trailer, because a lot of my work as a voice actor and a voice double is sometimes in a trailer if they don't have clean dialogue or they are taking one sentence, trying to make one sentence out of two sentences from different scenes, and the sound is different. They'll bring in a voice double to come in and... Right. and you know, kind of mesh it into one sentence. And uh, so I thought maybe it was going to be just some cleanup work for his stuff. And then they said, no, it's for an animated series. And then it's for all the toys. And then it's for all the games. And then, you know, wow. was like, so my world opened up there. Yeah, in 2001 uh, for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I started studying like crazy. And when I first heard it, I thought, well, Ewan's voice. So I had done some of his doubling for some things for when he had done an American accent. And... When he has an American accent, it's it's not dissimilar to this voice right here, my regular speaking voice. If you if you watch him in any movie where he's doing an American accent, like Robots, I was his double for the movie Robots. It was an oh, anime. Oh, huh. love that movie! Huh? Yeah, I, I doubled for him and for Robin Williams in that movie. And so, whoa, uh, yeah, Robin Williams, <laughs> golly, yeah. Uh, oh hey, all right. Oh, oh yeah, my sure. gosh, that's <laughs> amazing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I thought, well, if I just put an English accent in for me and think of Alec Guinness like what he did, then maybe it'll work. And so that's really what I did. Rather than concentrating on doing exactly what he was doing, I tried to relax in it and then just give myself a British accent. And so I thought, well, what would my voice sound like with a British accent? And it turned out it sounded very similar to what he was doing. You know, you look yeah. tired because of your mother. Dreams pass in time. And, mm. You know, you should be mindful of the full sonic. And, you know, so it, it was all of that stuff. Um, and 
and the rest is history, as we say. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Do you feel it like was, it was k- kind of uh, natural to fall into that? You know, just putting the um, accent into your own voice, or was that something that you kind of had to practice a lot? It was actually very natural. Yeah, it Great. it worked, um, and I think that that's probably also why uh, they ended. Well, I know the main reason they ended up using me uh, was we started doing so i remember when we were making when they were making uh revenge of the sith they were doing the video game at the same time and they bring me into the studio to record the lines for the game which mirrored the movie and they go we've got this scene we've got to play for you and they had this this laptop that was like you know twenty thousand passwords on it and code protected and and it had (laughs) footage of the movie and it was it was the um you know, uh, Mustafar scene. Oh my. And it was, green, <laughs> it was Ewan McGregor on a green screen, or I think it was a blue screen actually at the day yeah, on that. And just standing on a blue screen going, you know, you are my brother, Anakin, you know, and, oh, and wow. so they played the whole scene for me with no music, no nothing, just, just him there and said, we need to match this because they were still in production. And so I was able to emulate that kind of, you know, he's got those two levels. He's got that very soft, you know, this type of voice. I have a bad feeling about this. And then he's got, you know, come to your senses. What would Padme do if she were in your position? You know, that kind right, of thing. Right. Where he's got this gravel in his voice. And so I was able to emulate that. And they went, this is our guy. We know we've got him now. And uh, he's got both layers of it. So, uh, yeah, that was when I really kind of knew, all right, I'm in the pocket. And <laughs> it's it's easy. It's It's just my voice doing what it naturally would do. So that was really wonderful. So many times I've seen that micro series, uh, the Clone Wars, it escaped me that uh, it was actually between Attack of Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Um, yeah. Yeah. But because uh, well, we're all so much more familiar with the Clone Wars now because uh, it had such a long run and we're excited to see that it's coming back. But, you know, getting back to the Phantom Menace for a second, uh, you know, for me, the big geek out scene is when Darth Maul reveals himself in the hangar and he yeah. pulls out the double bladed lightsaber and this it starts the uh, the duel there and then what's going on with the uh, battle droids and the Gungans and the uh, fight above the planet. But but for you, it, what's that standout geek out moment from the Phantom Menace? Oh, um well, the the dual lightsaber. You know, I also love the fight in the desert with Qui Gon. I, I I think it's a really underrated scene. Yes. Um, and uh, because it's also it's just beautifully shot and it's so different. It's we don't have a lightsaber battle in broad daylight in the desert anywhere else. You know. Yeah. It's it's really a, a work of art, and it it's it's kind of like you know I'm not into horror films, but it's like when when a you can pull off being scared in the daytime, right? Yeah. <laughs> in a horror film, you've done it, and I feel it was the same with that. It was it was just so um, natural, you know what I mean? It's something yeah. so unnatural in a natural setting. Mm-hmm. I thought it was beautiful, but um, I really love when Obi Wan and Darth Maul are you know the walls, the the barriers are there. And they're waiting and he's just and at that i get chills thinking about it right now you know yeah. when when he's just he's just waiting he's, he's like a waiting for tiger. moment yeah oh and and ray you know ray park is a dear friend of mine and um he you know i don't know if you all know this is side note he's responsible for the the handle being the way that it is on the dual lightsaber because he they wanted to do all these special tricks with it and flips and things and he's like i can't do it with this tiny little hilt it was gonna just be a regular hilt so he said he goes into george lucas's office and he's very you know nervous and stuff and george's like what's up right you know and he's like well i can't really do this stuff but you know if it was bigger he goes okay well then we'll just flip it we'll just mirror it and make two that are the same with it and will that give you enough he's like yeah, you know, oh, so, wow. <laughs> uh, it was really, you know, but he was very like nervous. He's like, I'm going to get fired going in and talking to George Lucas, <laughs> asking him to change something. And he didn't. Of course, George was great about it. And it became this, you know, so famous, this hilt now. Yes. But um, yeah, that that scene, another one too, just also because I, I know Ray so well and I've interviewed him so many times and we've talked about it, was when Darth Maul uses the force and throws the thing to close the, you know, the oh, door yeah. and stuff. That yeah. was a moment that was a total geek out for Ray 
because he was like, I get to use the force. I'm finally like a, you know, like a Jedi doing that. And, but that moment when he does it, it's powerful. It gives you the chills. It's just like, because it's so intense when all that is going on. So I just think, I think that those parts of that movie are underrated as well. People need to look at those on their own and see uh, that that is Star Wars in the truest sense. Wow, that's a piece of dark Star Wars lore that I never knew. I mean, oh, as far as the right. the lightsaber hilt becoming <laughs> yeah. what it is for Darth Maul, so that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Sure, experience. sure. <laughs> it's literally necessity being the mother of invention there. So it's a uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, we talked a little bit about you know Ahmed and uh, Jar Jar. Do you think that the Clone Wars actually gave a little more depth to the character that we didn't get in? The Phantom Menace, yes. and that Absolutely. that helped turn him around on on a lot of fans that might have uh, been a little harsh. One hundred percent, yes, I agree uh, completely. I, and I actually remember saying that after seeing some of the episodes, and I thought, you know, uh, it was might might have been like some of the in the second season, first or second season, Bombad Jedi and stuff. And I thought this is going to start giving people a different appreciation for him. And by the end of those seasons that we had, of course, now we're coming back. Um, mm-hmm for Jar Jar I think everybody just kind of accepted him just kind of in the same vein as Ahsoka where when Ahsoka came out in the movie you know we we had the film The Clone Wars and everybody was kind of like oh here we go again right and now she's one of the most beloved characters in Star Wars history really for so many Mm -hmm. fans she's certainly my she was my favorite character on The Clone Wars uh not to jump ahead into the Clone Wars. I know we're still talking about Phantom Menace, but sure. uh, yeah, I, I think it's the same kind of thing where you give it a little time. You you get these characters to be able to play and show what they can be. And absolutely, there's a new appreciation. That's why I think, again, a lot of fans who grew up with the Clone Wars don't really even see Jar Jar ever as that kind. Of, it's like it's surprising to them if somebody brings up, oh, yeah, people kind of go, oh, Jar Jar. They'd be like, what do you mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Precisely. In a lot of ways, it gave a lot of breath to be able to kind of do, you might say, I don't want to say course corrections, but for example, you know, the um, supposed death of uh, Maul, uh, yeah. you know, the, <laughs> gave a lot of uh, story to, or story, I guess, space to bring him back. But um, now, if I remember correctly, didn't you do the, uh, didn't you do, uh, were to the MC at the Ray Park discussion celebration at Anaheim? Was that? Yeah, was that yeah. Correct? So yeah. I've that done was awesome. that. Uh- Oh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, Ray and I would do this uh, show called Star Wars Weekends at Disney World every year as well. And uh, so he had a show that he would do there called A Visit to the Mall that I hosted as well. So we are, (laughs) I have hosted, uh, emceed interview shows and shows with Ray uh, over probably close to 40, 50 times. So through the last, I don't know how many, seven seven or so years before uh, it all ended there. But yeah, that show in Anaheim was great fun. So we had been doing shows together for so many years. We were so comfortable and uh, it was, yeah, it was fun. Ray Ray had been out, the 501st had taken him out the night before and everything. And he was uh, just so tired because he, he got like barely any sleep. <laughs> oh, and I knew he was going to have to like, everybody wants him to do flips and jump around and lightsaber stuff. I'm like, I'll go easy on you. We'll just have fun. And he was like, oh, thanks, James, because I'm just wiped out. I'm beat, you know. Uh, and because, you know, once you're there, you're just having fun. But it, it was a great time. And there, I, one of my favorite moments in that, panel was uh when we needed a lightsaber we needed a darth maul lightsaber and some little kid had one and he brought it up and ray of course you know used it and demonstrated and then he signed it for the kid and it was was so great it was just a magical moment but that's that is ray park ray park is one of the most genuine uh giving loving uh folks and is just so grateful to be within this world of star wars and uh, but an amazing talent you know the the thing that amazed me about him when i first saw him that was another thing that hit me in the phantom menace was this character's um athleticism and the martial arts that he was doing those side flips where he does it it's like a scissor roll kind of thing yes. they call it where he spins in the air sideways he did that without wires oh and the gosh. reason he did that is because when ray was a little kid he would watch all those chinese action movies yeah. and mm-hmm. he would see these guys doing those spins but they were all on wires but ray as a kid didn't know that so he went i'm gonna do that so he taught himself how to do it without wires wow so, that is incredible <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there you go yeah you know as, as we're having this conversation we've brought up uh, obi-wan of course padme uh darth maul and Reminds me that how many great characters there were in that movie, you know, yeah. Jar Jar Binks and all that. But, you know, 
putting aside a bias, I guess, of Obi Wan, <laughs> you know, who else? Uh, who else really stood out to you? Do you have a, a favorite from the movie? I think, well, I would have to say Qui-Gon Jinn, wouldn't I? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I really do think Qui-Gon, I think we got cheated. I would have loved to have seen more of him. And that's, again, the wonderful thing about the Clone Wars is we got a little bit of Qui-Gon back in there. But I think that that character was great because there was something um, that they touch on. And if as you watch it more, you get it more. But he was a rebel. See, Qui-Gon, yes. you know, they did not always agree, he and the Jedi Council. And I want to know more about that story. I want to know what was going on there. I want to know about his upbringing. So that mm -hmm. certainly sparked it for me. I'm like, who is this guy, you know? I think nice. we're going to get a little opportunity in hopefully Claudia Gray's book, um, yeah. Master and Apprentice, coming oh, yeah. out. So that yeah. should be fun. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. should be. Yeah, we'll see. Now, have you read Dark Disciple yet? I have to ask you, James. No, you know, I've been asked that question many times. I do need to read it um, or at least uh, listen to the audiobook because the yes. audiobooks. The audiobooks are so well done for all these Star Wars uh, books mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I highly recommend to your fan base there uh, that they, if they do not, if they read the books, that's great. But also take a uh, listen to some of these audio versions. Cause like the, the audio book of Kenobi, for example, was, was just beautifully yes. done. And I loved that, but uh, no, that book, uh, you know, I know everybody really loved it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I need to read it at some point. I'm highly sorry. Recommend. I have. Yeah. Now, Thank have you. you done any audiobook type things or is there anything possibly in the works that you can talk about? Uh, no. Uh, there, uh, see, here's the way you know I'm actually uh, not involved in something if I say no, because mm -hmm. unlike <laughs> Superman, I never lie. Uh, but, uh, so, no, I, I, the one thing I did was when the book Kenobi came out, Entertainment Weekly had me read an excerpt from it to help oh, cool. do some publicity yeah. for it. And so I, I read a, a small one of Obi-Wan's meditations to Qui-Gon. And uh, so I read that. I think that's online somewhere on YouTube. You can Google it. Uh, but um, so that's as close as I ever got to doing that. But no, I, you know, audiobooks is a true art form. And uh, the folks that do them are really wonderful at it. And so I generally leave that to the pros within that world. And then I do the voiceover for everything else. But uh, if I was asked, I'm sure I would have to uh, look and see. But it's, yeah, it's a big endeavor. I mean, I, I have done a few audiobooks, not Star Wars related uh, for mm -hmm. friends and such. But um, it's, there's, a lot, there's a lot involved there, yeah. Well, I know Catherine Tabor's doing the Padme book, correct? Yes, she's already From finished it. Yes. And you're pretty darn animated when you do those Fox specials. I, I <laughs> When I follow you on Instagram and I see you doing oh, all that thanks. and it's just the pauses and you're just, you're so into it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure voice acting is a lot more behind the scenes than people think it is too, as far as what you're doing to emulate the voices that you need to perform. Yeah, and it's a, it's a lot more exercise than people think too. You know, I... I generally will say to people when they go, oh, voice of you, you go in the booth and you talk, I go, well, go into a room and scream at the top of your lungs for an hour and then talk consistently for another hour and right. then go back to screaming right. for another hour. And then, you know, cause it's usually about four hours and see how your, your neck and your back and your body feel and your heart feels it's, yeah. it can be quite a workout. And, uh, and so we use everything that an, a regular on-camera actor would use as well to convey all the information, sometimes even more because of the fact that you're not seeing the hand movements and gestures and stuff. But uh, it is definitely a workout and it, it takes a lot of energy uh, to to convey all that information. So does that get you in the role more if you're actually physically acting out things or acting out emotion? It Yeah, it does. You know, Ashley Eckstein will always uh, talk about her and Matt uh, Lanter, uh, Anakin and Ahsoka, having... Uh, their lightsabers, they would they would hold a pencil in their hands. So any of those scenes where you see Ahsoka battling someone with a lightsaber, <laughs> you have to envision Ashley holding a pencil while she's standing in front of the microphone and moving it around and trying not to make any noise with it. But uh, That's yeah, more a you light definitely... pen knife, not a lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I will forever be seeing that in my head now. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's pretty that great. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now every action scene is ruined for me. That's okay, though. Yeah, That's sorry. All right. It's all right. It's okay. No. Well, it's just like, uh, again, you know, in these movies and stuff, like, uh, again, Ray Park in uh, the Snake Eyes role and stuff, yes. when they were all shooting guns, he and The Rock would be standing there going, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> uh, so It's kind of hard not to do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. so, so, may I ask you a question? You, you spoke about doing sure. some vocal exercises. Uh, do you sing yep. at all? 
Um, if the check cashes, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say no. Uh, <laughs> no, I've I've sung actually uh, quite a bit in my career. Yeah, I I used to when I worked uh, in radio, I would do parody songs for radio stations and such. Uh, but I've I've sung the national anthem at, on Star Wars night at the uh, Dodger game and God Bless America. Uh, I've I've sung on countless Disney cartoons and things. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there's a, I think even on my website, I think I have a little demo of some of the singing that I've done. Usually it's in characters and, and stuff. And, and that's always kind of a little trick too, is, is singing as somebody else or singing as a character. Mm, yeah, I yeah. can imagine. Did you, so when you were growing up, were you just the kind of kid that would kind of come up with the voices? Like if you were playing or something like that, you'd kind of <laughs> have to come up with the other characters to play against or something. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I was always, I have always been talking to myself. That's why, uh, uh, yeah, it's my, my podcast is called talking to myself. My stage show is called talking to myself because it's, that's always what it's been ever since I was four years old and decided to be, uh, an entertainer and a, and a voice actor. I've been just making up voices. I just didn't have many friends, James. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, I watched exactly. that little, um, the video that you have on your oh, website yeah. of how you originally wanted to be Dr. Taylor. <laughs> yes. And then you realized that, you know, maybe that wasn't the way to go. But your daughter's now doing voices. Yes. She I is. I saw. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, if you give a mouse a cookie, I believe. Is that She's, the one she did? Yeah. She's been on If You Give a Mouse a Cookie a couple episodes of that. And then her and I actually recorded, uh, we're in a movie together that will be coming out, Ooh. I am hopeful, uh, September of this year. It's a film called Animal Crackers. It has been around, it's been finished for quite a few years, but it has been stuck in distribution um, with uh, various companies holding it hostage for mm. a while. But now the creators of it, my friend Scott, Christian Sava, uh, has finally gotten the rights back, and so they're going to get it out into theaters in September. It's a fantastic movie. It is uh, starring myself, uh, uh, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt play my daughter's oh. parents. It was actually, even before A Quiet Place, it was the first movie they ever did together because they, really? of course, are real husband and wife mm -hmm. team. Uh, but uh, Danny DeVito is in it, Patrick Warburton, Raven Simone, Wallace Shawn, Gilbert Gottfried, and of course, we've got Ian McKellen playing my oh, brother. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, and then Tara <laughs> Strong and Harvey Firestein. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a great, it's a great, fun, family-friendly movie. You can see the trailer. It is online. If you Google Animal Crackers, you'll find the uh, trailer. And my daughter plays Mackenzie, the little girl in it. Mm -hmm. And she like she's all over the trailer. If you watch the trailer, you can hear my daughter all over it. Yeah. Wow. And so what does she think of voice acting then? Is she loving it? <laughs> you know, it's funny. She goes, you know, Dad, I, I, I like voice acting, but... Uh, I think it's more of a hobby. I she, she she's um, actually quite an accomplished writer. She oh, writes for her. She yeah. Writes stories. She's written novels. She's written uh, I think eight eight different books. And so we're actually going to try to get them published at some point. But oh, uh, awesome. they're really good fantasy adventure stuff. She's got an amazing mind. She reads more books. She can read within a week. She'll read three or four books, and she just gobbles them down. And uh, so. It's, it's pretty great. So that's what she really would like to do. And I say, that's fine. Just write books that can be turned into movies that I can have a voice part in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, when it comes to voice roles and stuff, I mean, as I was trying to make clear at the beginning of this uh, segment, you've done so many different things. Is there a character that you've, whether it's Star Wars or something else that you really wanted to play that you just haven't been able to get that role or haven't been able to get the voice down? Um, no, you know, there's, I, I really, I try to just be grateful for the ones I have, but there's always opportunities when auditions come in. And so I would say the two that have been kind of that elusive one uh, would be Bugs Bunny and the Joker. Yes. Uh, so those oh, two wow. Bugs Bunny. They pop up. Yeah. Yeah. They pop up a lot because there's always they're always doing different, you know, versions of these things. Your Daffy Duck um, is pretty awesome too. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, thanks. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Daffy is one of my absolute favorites. And I, I would I would put him in there as well. But uh <laughs> Yeah, th those ones uh, certainly would be fun to do, but the people that voice them are brilliant at it. Uh, so I, you know, we're all a, a pretty close knit family sure. in the world of voiceover. Yeah. So I try to just, you know, give a nice nod to my friends that are doing them, but uh, yeah. but would love to take a crack at them. I get it. It's sort of like the world of tax accounting. We're all very. <laughs> 
close to each other. That, that's that's right. In a that's, weird that's way. That's absolutely in a cold, cold way. <laughs> in a no. cold. <laughs> well, I know Jay has been dying to talk about a certain wedding that you were involved in uh, oh. recently. So, Jay, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, yeah. At Salt Lake City Comic Con, you and Anna got a chance to officiate the Obi and Satine wedding. So, can you talk a little bit about that and tell us tell us how that all came to be and sure. just fill us in. Yeah, it was really wonderful. And it's the power of social media is what I would say. Uh, so a few years back, I went to Salt Lake City and was a guest at the con and I did my stage show there and had a great time. And there was this group of people that were dressed as various Star Wars characters. One was Obi-Wan Kenobi and one was the Duchess Satine. And I think we had a, we might've had an Ezra and a Kanan there and, uh, and, and all, but they all were just fun folks and I was harassing them giving them a bad time and we were just having a good time at the table there while I was signing things for them and then flash forward a few years and the the Duchess and Obi-Wan had fallen in love and mm. they met they met through their love of Clone Wars so they uh, uh, they Chris and and Jess the, this couple they he was watching the Clone Wars one night and she was over there visiting him and a friend or whatever. She she met him that night because there there was a maybe his roommate or so, someone, you know, was there. And she's like, What are you watching? Oh, this looks fascinating. Well, who's that? Well, that's the Duchess Satine. Oh my goodness. Well, and she's like, I would love to cosplay as her. And he's like, Yeah, that'd be great. You know, I'd love to do Obi-Wan, you know. And then they fell in love. And so oh, wow. the Duchess and Obi-Wan brought them together, and then they were getting married. And so People were, and I, I think, you know, they would face, uh, not Facebook, but uh, Instagram me from time to time pictures and stuff, and I'd like them and such. So their friends said, hey, Obi-Wan, hey, Duchess, they're getting married. You guys should come out and officiate the wedding. Ha ha, you know, wink, wink, face, smiley face <laughs> thing. And so Anna brings it to my attention, and she goes, what do you think? And I say, yeah, well, you know what, I guess we, we should. We should go down there. And so we... Uh, decided on our own to go out there and fly ourselves out and surprise them. So we we did give them some notice and there's a video of it on my YouTube channel. You can see the whole story unfold. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we thought it wouldn't be fair to just surprise them at the, the day of. So we sure. we called the con and we said, hey, would it be possible if we come to this con and um, sign autographs and stuff and just be there as guests because we're going to be there anyways and this is why and the con was like oh that's a great story and yeah sure and so they let us come out and uh and set up a table and because we were not like official guests or anything so we were um, kind of you know crashing their party and <laughs> we got to officiate the wedding and hang out with all of them and the the garrison of the, the mandalorian mercs and the 501st and all these just wonderful folks and it was a beautiful thing so what we did is we uh we had henry gilroy henry is one of the writers of the clone wars movie and this tv show the clone wars and so much uh work in the world of Star Wars and Henry's a brilliant writer and Obi-Wan is his favorite character and he knows the character well so he wrote for us oh, cool. a a actual wedding ceremony wow. and that we then we read and I I put it inside the uh, the Jedi path book and yes. uh, held that up as uh, as our little uh, guidebook there and uh, <laughs> officiated the wedding and uh, we just had a blast. It was just a really lovely, sweet thing. And it was, again, the power of social media, the power of fans being vocal and asking us. And so now I say this, and now you know what's going to happen. Everybody's <laughs> going to ask me. But <laughs> anyways, there you go. So, that is amazing. So, so since a writer did all that, and you guys officiated it, and I, I think this is official Star Wars canon now, right? Uh, yes. I mean, I think it really <laughs> happened behind the scenes. And uh you know, so yeah, there's all sorts of connections there. I'm trying to wonder. I'm just thinking, like, what a Jedi uh, marriage vow would be like. It's like uh, to have and hold till death do you part, uh, but don't get too close to each other because if death do you part, then you can't be so mad about it. that. Turns you to the dark side or anything. So uh, watch out there. But, but uh, yes, that's why I'm yes. not a, not a writer, <laughs> no, Mr. No. Arnold Taylor. That's. Uh, it, yes, it, it started um, something like the Jedi Masters of old tell us there is no light side or no dark side. There is only the Force. How one would use it through the actions of their heart determines its nature. Similarly, the ancient protectors of Mandalore chose not good nor evil, but bound themselves to their warriors' code and honor and loyalty in the name of their clans and each other. And then it goes on and on. But uh, wow, yes. So great. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. chills. That is amazing. <laughs> one of the things, stuff. yeah, one of the things I loved about Obi Wan is just um, the banter he has with so many other characters in the Clone Wars. Whether it's Anakin, and it, it kind of got that brother thing going on where it's approving and disapproving and jovial and then frustrated at times. But then with uh, Satine, you know, they they could really rub each other because you know of their of their past. Uh, yeah. So you know, what was that like recording? Because that. I just remember seeing some of those Mandalore episodes and thinking to myself, that seems like it would be an awful lot of fun to do. Yeah, those were, you know, people ask me what are my favorites, and I try not to have favorites. I love all of it, but those episodes with Anna are generally my favorites, I will have to say. And it was fun. I mean, although also I would say um, some of the fun, funnest times I had was with Ventress. Uh, as mm -hmm. well, uh, mm -hmm. Nika Futterman doing the voice of Ventress because there's that wonderful banter there. That was before we knew the Duchess. You know, that was where Obi-Wan was kind of being playful and flirtatious. And then it became so present with uh, the Duchess Satine. And I just loved that. It was fun. Although I will give you a little uh, behind the scenes story. There was one, I think the third part of the three part arc with the Mandalorian plot and such. I actually uh, was not in the studio with Anna, and it was the most touching one. It was the one where she makes the comment about the beard and everything. Oh. Um, oh normally, we would be recording together, but I had uh, been in a car accident the oh. day before oh, wow. and um, was uh, actually suffering from vertigo uh, from the accident. Oh, no. So I was wow. unable to drive to the studio that day. So I did it from my home studio with Dave Filoni reading the uh, Duchess Satine lines. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. So, so you had to play off of Dave. That is so funny. To be funny. a fly on yeah. the wall there. Wow. Yeah. You know? I like, do, I like the beard, Jedi... Obi-Wan. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, not and, yeah, not as I'll sweet. I'll never yeah. watch that scene the same way again. <laughs> that's right. That's so great. And that's okay. <laughs> well, you're such a great artist in every way. And now you've been doing, I think since, I want to say 2013, if I'm not uh, incorrect, with your own artwork. Is that, am I incorrect in no, saying well, that? I was looking at your website. Yeah, that was when I really kind of made it all uh, public and such. And I, I, I believe I started painting maybe a little earlier than that. Well, I've, I've been painting my whole life, but it was when I really started putting them out there and, and making it more present. So yeah, 2013 was really once I started kind of saying, hey, here's some of my art. But yes, thank you for bringing it up. That's very nice Absolutely. of you. Absolutely. Is it all for like more personal enjoyment use? Do you ever donate? Do you auction? Or is it just kind of like, this is what I'm doing and... <laughs> kind of yeah. sharing it out there because I, I love it. I love all oh. the Bible verses. And Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, as as a person of faith, as a Christian, I I really wanted, it came out of a, a need to be able to look around and see positivity in my life and in my home. And we had a lot of empty walls and I was like, you know, I, I want to fill those with God's words. So I, I just started painting these visions that I had of them and started putting them out there. And then people did start you know, liking them. And I, I had a lot of friends and such saying, oh, I love this and I love that. And so I would I would sneak from their spouses what their favor, favorite verse was or something. And then I would paint uh, them that and give it to them as a gift. And as a matter oh, of fact, awesome. there's, there's one on my website. I think it's um, from Song of Solomon. It says, I am my beloved and my beloved is, uh, you know, uh, am I? Uh, mm -hmm. And I did that one actually for Matt Lanter. That was a, a, a wedding gift to Matt and his lovely wow. wife, Angela. So, um, yeah, so more so now what I do is I, I end up doing them for, for friends and things or just, you know, giving them out. But uh, I, I, people have been asking about them. And so I, start, I may start making prints of them and making them available for people if they, they want them in that way. And then also some of the original art, too. I've, I've, unfortunately, I don't have as much of the painting space in my home right now. And so I'm looking to start painting again and I'm trying to find the right space to do it. And when I do, I hope to... Uh, maybe make them available to people for purchase and oh, stuff too. Awesome. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Spe that's great. Speaking of positivity, um, I am, the past couple of months, I've started listening to your new podcast. And Oh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. It's uh, And I have to tell, tell you, it really makes the uh, hours, uh, well, hour and a half or so, you know, it really makes it go by. <laughs> Long, and uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's super positive. It, you do come away feeling um, very uplifted. Um, I really appreciate your insights too and creativity. 
Uh, just, you know, if you, I, I remember actually I was sitting there thinking, boy, I'm hitting a brick wall on something. And I yeah. think that was the episode where you and, um, uh, God, I'm trying to remember he worked with DC, but he wrote a book recently. Um, and you oh. guys were discussing the origins of creativity, you know, yeah, Alan and, Arnold. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, uh, that was, that was very inspiring for me, but, um, so have you always, I mean, where'd this love of doing that podcast come from and like, uh, just, you know. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Well, thank you. Thanks for letting me talk about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a podcast. It's called Talking to Myself, and it is exactly that. So it's me talking to me. Basically, all the characters on the show are me, and I just do it in real time. I just switch back and forth from voice to voice, and yeah, uh, I just have a good time. <laughs> oh, thanks. And uh, it's just basically a culmination of me, like what I was like. You were asking earlier about how I was as a kid. It's That's basically what it was. It was me with a tape recorder just doing voices. And so all these years I've been doing, you know, I've done a lot of videos. I did Clone Wars Conversations, which is a, a, a show that I put on my YouTube channel that's interview show with me and my castmates at Clone Wars. And it's a video. And there's all these videos and stuff. And I thought, you know, I'm an audio guy. I've always done audio. I came from radio and stand-up comedy and all of that was my, my background and theater of the mind and so it's like why am i not doing a podcast and so people were asking me because people would say oh i listen to your i did these one things called jet drives on my youtube channel where i'd go for a drive and i had the gopro up and people were like oh i just listened to them and i thought well i guess if people are just listening to the audio i should just try this podcasting thing so i just i got in my studio one day and just started talking and seeing what i could come up with and you know that's how it all kind of came about and now i'm I'm hooked. I really enjoy it. And I, I love sharing with people and trying to kind of be a, a light and a guide to folks, yes. no matter what they believe. And just say, this is how I believe. This is what I believe. And this is also my work and tell some fun stories about my work. And because I, I, I know I live a very unique and um, kind of strange life being a voice actor because we're, we're celebrities, but we're not famous. We're known, but not really. But we, our voices are known. You know, our characters are known. So it's a unique uh, perspective, and it's a unique life. And I thought, well, it'd be fun to to talk about. And so, that's what I do each week. It comes out every Wednesday. Came mm -hmm. out today, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody has been. Uh, it seems like everybody's enjoying it quite a bit. Well, I have to say, oh. it does reach across many aisles because I'm a Sith Capalian. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it uh, yeah. <laughs> little, little different walk, but I still, uh, you know, sure. take a bit from it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll second that as well. I'm, I'm currently training for the uh, Star Wars Rival Run weekend races oh, at Disney World. And great. I've added this to my rotation as I've been oh. running because there have been, <laughs> these runs have been getting longer. And so I've needed more podcasts to listen to. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. Um but James, thanks so much for joining us tonight. This has been fantastic. Um, you ca I cannot tell you how much cred I've just gotten with my own boys, uh, <laughs> whose introduction to Star Wars is the Clone Wars. And uh, when I told them I was doing this, they flipped out. Uh, but uh, before you go, um, you know, you've talked about the podcast, but where else can everyone find everything that you're up to? Oh, thanks for saying that. Um, yeah, you can uh, go to jamesarnoldtaylor.com is kind of the easy one because I have links to everything from there. You can look up the the podcast. You can look up my stage show. You can look up my YouTube channel there. You can watch videos there. Or you can just go straight up to YouTube and search James Arnold Taylor. You'll find my channel there. Please subscribe to the channel because I put stuff up there uh, as often as I can. The podcast is up there weekly. It's also on iTunes and stuff. But uh, those are the places, generally speaking, of course, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm Jat Actor, J A T Actor, and then uh, there's also a Twitter handle for my podcast as well called the Jat Cast. But uh, that, you know, I just uh, I just hope people would uh, subscribe, and when they do send something to me on social media that is me actually responding to you too. So awesome. yeah. Jay knows that firsthand because that's, yes, uh, I do. Just reached out, so yeah, there you go. So reach out and say hello to James Arnold Taylor. Yeah, I like to call James, uh, not James, uh, Jay, our, our um, nice face of the show. Because um, anytime <laughs> somebody gets an email from taxes, they're like, spam. You know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, okay. you have been definitely very, been very gracious with us. And oh. you've always responded to me personally, which I absolutely 
feel is just phenomenal because as you said, you know, it's just, we're all in this together in this world and we have to inspire each other. And it's just great to know that with all the credits that you have to your name and everything that you've done, that you're, you're still so grounded and that you're, you know, you're truly just, you're one of us. And I think that's so inspirational for, for everyone out there. Oh, well, I really, really appreciate you saying that. Now, you know, that's the best I can do, actually. I, I realize that though I have a very unique job, I am no different than anybody else. I am not to be placed in any place higher than anybody else because of that. And I think uh, that's our tendency now is to kind of hold up celebrity and such. And we have to realize celebrities are just regular people like everybody else. They, they put on their Jedi robes the same as anyone else. Or, or otherwise. <laughs> or <laughs> otherwise, same, yes. but, uh... <laughs> and I have to read today's today's quote from your book, oh. JAT 360, Day 51. Dreams can be made into reality, so dream big and live even bigger and believe. So, oh. scoundrels, I think that's an amazing way to um, bring this full circle for us for James Arnold Taylor as our guest today. Oh, well, that is so kind. Hey, you know, let me also say, by the way, that this, this episode I am dedicating to Gianni who's Ooh. very strong in the force. And I believe there's a birthday for Johnny soon, yes. I, mm -hmm. Is that correct? Oh yeah, I believe uh, today birthday? is his birthday, in fact. Oh yeah. my. Yes, well, Johnny, be mindful of the force. Always use it for good, never go to the dark side. And it will be with you always. And then also a special shout out to Kyle and to Kobe one Kobe one Kenobi, I suppose, yes. <laughs> yes. The force is strong with all of them, yes. They will appreciate that so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, James. This is fantastic. That's my pleasure. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night and that the force is with you. Thank May the force so be with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for... Science all right, let's take a look at the results from our latest Twitter poll. So after episode 74, when we concluded the lightsaber bracket, we asked, which of these lightsaber duels is the best? And we the nominations were our final four from the bracket. So that was Luke versus Vader from The Empire Strikes Back, Luke versus Kylo Ren from The Last Jedi, Maul versus Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan uh, from The Phantom Menace, and Obi-Wan versus Anakin from Revenge of the Sith. Hmm. And the results... Coming in fourth place is Luke versus Kylo with 4%. Huh. Coming in third, Luke versus Vader from The Empire Strikes Back, huh. which was our winner. Huh. <laughs> so didn't even, didn't even make the finals, uh, yeah. and, uh, according to our scoundrels. Uh, coming in second is Maul versus Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. That was our other finalist, huh. and that got 32% of the vote. Yeah. And then winning was Obi-Wan versus Anakin from Revenge of the Sith with 36% huh. of the vote. Wow. So we clearly um, do not know what we're doing. No, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, oh. Because really, you know, 36% to 32% to 28% for the top three voters. And that's almost a third for each one of those. And, uh, you know, we said it ourselves on a different day, we could have different duels winning this thing. Yeah. Um, we all said that at some point during the discussion, and it just so happens that in the past week, while this poll's been up, the scoundrels, you know, some of them voted for Obi Wan versus Anakin yeah. for Revenge of the Sith. But uh, um, we did have some feedback on that. Um, our friend Hassan Scarborough, who's at Fetmatic on Twitter, said, "I pick Obi Wan and Anakin duels my favorite and the best. Their skill and focus were on full display. They had no care for their bodies." I while in plant ash and boiling body. lava around them and pure Girl, emotion with each bodies? swing was evident. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And then our friend, uh, Jedi Knight Ray Walter, uh, no, mm -hmm. uh, Ryder Waldron <laughs> from Idiots Array. I think the best, most action, most emotion, most reluctant to kill their opponent is Obi-Wan and Anakin and Revenge of the Sith. But I think my favorite is Luke and Vader and Return of the Jedi, which, you know, of course, we got rid of in the first round. Um, these fights also have several parallels, one of which is Vader being defeated in each but not killed by a lightsaber. Man, so, that guy should just get his own podcast instead of taking up all our time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I'll just suggest that to him. Maybe did, find a couple yeah. co-hosts. Didn't you sure. in the Utah area? I mean, you know, I think we, I think we clearly one near maybe me. didn't cover that in ours. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> well, so thanks to all of our scoundrels that voted and uh, for their feedback on that. Um, I had a hard time coming up with an idea for a poll this week, but we're going to go with something pretty simple. Uh, taxes, uh, we mentioned it and you had some ideas in the um, news section, but here's the question. Who's the prettiest? W- oh, no, we all know Joe would win. Come on. Oh. Uh, oh, which thanks. part of Triple Force Friday are you most eager for? So there's Episode Nine merchandise, the Mandalorian merchandise, Jedi Fallen Order, or general Star Wars merchandise. So Taxus, um, I'm sorry, Jay, you get to go first. Uh, out of all that, what are you most looking forward to? Oh, hey, well, thanks for putting me first there. Um, gosh, this is a tough one. I mean, I'm I'm always loving general Star Wars merchandise, of course. I, I don't Attention, really know man. enough about the Jedi Fallen Order just general, yet, you know, other than what we've talked about and some of the snippets that I've seen here and there. And gosh, episode nine would be so great. But I'm going to go with the Mandalorian merch because, you know, we're getting some new characters, maybe some new aliens, some new droids, and it's it's all going to be kind of fresh and new. So, yeah, yeah. Mandalorian. All right. How about you, Texas? Um, well, I'm kind of intrigued by... Um, Episode nine that I always confuse with the last Jedi for some reason, but now I know it's actually episode nine. Um, but I'm going to go with, uh, the Jedi fallen order. Yeah. Cause uh, I think, uh, video games are fun and you can sit there action figures. You got to like do stuff and go, and it takes a lot of exercise in your arms. It's called creativity and imagination. It's called f- too much freedom. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to um I'm, of course I'm looking at all three of these things, but um we've we've had uh some images for the Mandalorian. We kind of know what some of the characters look like. We we've, we've been teased a little bit there. Um you know, probably not as much as I'd like to know about it, but uh, episode 9 we we're familiar with, you know, Ray, Finn and Poe and several of the other characters. We just don't know as much about the Fallen Order other than a bare bones synopsis of the uh um of the story. So I, I, I'm, I'm ready for another star Wars game uh, on the console uh, as much fun as battlefront two is. Uh, it's would be fun to be able to play a star Wars game for an hour or two without repeatedly being killed by 20 other people. So, <laughs> um, so oh, that's, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, scoundrels, we want to know what you think. So be on the lookout for our Twitter poll, which will be going live shortly and cast your vote. And that will do it for this edition of silence fools. All right, we're about ready to finish episode 75. So what do you two have coming up this week? Uh, Well, of course, for me, you can always find me right here on Starship Sabres and Scoundrels. And we also had our recent edition of That's a Wizard that just came out. So you can go back and check that one out. And I mentioned that I went on a shopping spree from Redbubble. I actually got those items this week. So I wore one of them today to school. It's a uh, Padme Amidala inspired from her red invasion gown. And it's a fun little tank shell kind of thing. So I'll be talking about that one in the next That's a Wizard, I'm sure. Um, Yeah, and you can always find my archive blogs over at Coffee with Kenobi and my Core Worlds Couture fashion mm-hmm. review blogs. Mm-hmm. And of course, you can always catch me on uh, the social medias and the discords and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah. And you can find me on the Geek Supreme over with Scott Murray, Jeff McGee, and Regina Davis. Uh, we've had a bit of a little bit of hiatus and sickness and illness and not death yet, but, uh, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it drops every Tuesday. It's a fun little game show style thing where, uh, you know, we discuss the current geeky topics and people win points and it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Also, um, I'm doing a stage show. Um, I was kind of inspired. So my stage show is Taxus, man of 1.5 voices. All righty. You can find my recent comic reviews um, related to Star Wars over on RetroZap.com. You can also find my comic discussion each month with Jovial J on Jedi Journals. With the return of Discovery, Warp Trails is back. My wife and I have been recover- uh, covering every episode for the past few weeks. Um, we had quite the spirited debate on the Prime Directive after Uh-oh. the last episode. Uh-oh. So uh, go check that one out. Travel uh, Paradise Scoundrels. Yeah, so uh, you can hear Beth and I uh, on Warp Trails, which is exclusively on the RetroZap podcast feed or on RetroZap.com. Scoundrels, thank you for listening and for your support. If you've enjoyed the show, this has been Starship Savers and Scoundrels, and we would love a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcasts, especially Apple Podcasts. On the other hand, if you didn't like this, please don't trade us to Uncar Plut. You're not more likely to get more than a quarter portion. No. 
If you aren't already, please consider subscribing to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Have a friend interested in Star Wars? Tell them about our show and help them find it on their mobile device, on their app of choice. Word of mouth is always the best way to help the Scoundrel Nation grow. Thanks to everyone that's been helping us spread the word on social media. February was an incredible month for this show. We had more downloads and subscribers than ever. So thank you for everyone that's been helping spread the word and took the time to um, subscribe and yeah. join us. So thanks to everybody. Absolutely. Yes. We always welcome new listeners. And I also had a, a fellow teacher that asked me just this last week for the podcast link. So oh, I'm hoping oh. that, yeah. Tell so him I'm not to go back and listen to right. episode 55. That's, okay. that's not a good one. I probably need to remove that one. Before All right, I'll, I'll write that down. Okay. <laughs> so speaking of social media, Starship Sabers and Scoundrels can be followed on Twitter and Instagram at, at SQPod and liked on Facebook where we are, facebook.com slash SQPod. If you want to follow Darth Taxis on Twitter, he yeah. is at Darth Taxis. Of course, Dennis is at DJKVER2 and I am at Joyce Krebs. Don't forget about our page on the RetroZap Discord server. We'll be there talking about novels, comics, and everything Star Wars. You can find links to that in our show notes and on our social media. You can reach us by email at skewedpod at retrozap.com. We would love to hear your thoughts about our Phantom Menace discussion with James Arnold Taylor, but we welcome discussion and feedback of any kind. I can't say his name without saying it like that, so I'm sorry, James, if I'm <laughs> if that if that annoys you. But emails, really good tweets, and iTunes reviews end up in Silence Fools. Again, our email address is skewedpod at retrozap.com. I'm sure Mr. Arnold Taylor does not mind. We are a proud member of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Please check out RetroZap for other great shows, including the Superhero Suite featuring Jay and Josh, other Star Wars shows such as Beltway Banthas, Kanaz Castle, and Brews and Blasters, collecting shows like the Dork Lair, and other great shows like the Animaniacast, the Artcast, the Deucecast Movie Show, the Dunecast, Warp Trails, Techno Retro Dads, and We Know Nothing. Also be sure to check out our Scoundrels t-shirts on TeePublic. The link to our store is in the show notes. Are you starting your voiceover career? Our t-shirts make a good pop filter if you hold them up just right, just like this. So, <laughs> All right. Perfect. Thank, thanks to Aaron Lay for our show logos and to James Volpe, the Sky Geek, for our The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly show logo. And thanks to Mario and the Scoundrel Players for lending us their voice talents. And here is our disclaimer. Starship Sabres and Scoundrels is not endorsed, affiliated with, or sponsored by Lucasfilm Limited and or Disney. This show is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. All characters, music, and sounds are the intellectual property of their respective copyright holders. All else is the intellectual property of Starship Sabres and Scoundrels unless otherwise indicated. All right. Any final thoughts? Yeah, uh, so fun, fun kind of, you know, correlating this episode. Did did you guys know that I once had a voiceover tryout for a uh, shredded cheese commercial? Oh, really? How'd it go? Nah, I, I didn't get it. Oh, I'm sorry. Did they tell you why? Yeah, they said my voice was grating. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that'll do it for episode 75 of Starship Sabres and Scoundrels. Thanks for listening. Until next time, may the force be with you. Well, that is our look at the news. So, uh, Scoundrels, there's a whole lot more going on. Uh, but if we covered it all, we would have a three-hour podcast just talking about news. And we would never get to our excellent conversation with James Arnold Taylor. So, if you want to know more about these stories, head over to such websites as uh, RetroZap, uh, Coffee with Kenobi, Jedi News, Fanthatrax, and TheForce.net. And I'll come back after the show and do the other three, two hours for you, Scoundrels. So, you just come back here. Dennis, you with me? Jay? you? Guys, hello? Mm. No? Um, I think I have a bar mitzvah to go to. I think I'm on record as sacrificing what I need for the scoundrels. Okay. <laughs>